Hey guys, I want to talk about a recent purchase that I did for my home surveillance system. And this is the latest addition I have for it. And this is a real link video doorbell Wi-Fi uh, doorbell camera, essentially. Now, this is the one I landed on and it's certainly not the most expensive one. It's certainly not the cheapest one, but it ticked all the boxes for what I was looking for in a camera. And it all goes back to the home surveillance system that I recently installed. And I did a whole video on that. But to summarize what I did, I basically took an old laptop and I installed some free software on it that allows me to do motion detection and video recording. And it also has some AI for doing object detection. So I know when a person walks up my driveway or a car drives into my driveway or whatever. And when it detects that it is able to send me a notification that something has happened. Now I'll link to that video in the video description down below, but I want to focus on this guy. And I want to talk about the four requirements that I had for this particular doorbell and why I chose this one. As I mentioned, there are four criteria and this particular one just has all four of them, but it has a lot of other features as well. Uh, one, it needed to support Wi-Fi. This one actually would work with PoE or with Wi-Fi. You could run Ethernet to this, and if I could have got Ethernet to it, I think I would have used that. But where this thing is mounted, there's just really no practical way to get Ethernet to it. So I just basically said it's just going to work with Wi-Fi to get the data connection back to my NVR. And related to that, I needed a way to power it that wasn't battery operated. So I wanted one that would work with the, the existing AC loop that went to the doorbell button on the outside of my house. My, my house had an old analog system that had an 18 volt uh, DC AC loop that went to the front door. And this one was compatible with that. So this is one reason I bought this particular camera over other ones. Another reason I bought this one is I needed to support RTSP or OnVIF. Both of these protocols will allow me to stream the results back to my NVR DVR. And this one supports both of those. And I'll show you how to turn those on with this particular camera. It's not exactly well documented in the, for this particular camera, but once you figure out where the setting is and you, and you turn it on, it works just fine without a hitch. And lastly, I didn't want to have to pay for a subscription service just to have the camera. So you might pay a little bit more for this particular camera uh, to not have a subscription service, but you don't have a subscription service when it's all said and done. You can watch and review all of your recordings in a local context, or if you want to, you can plug an SD card this and it'll write to that. But I didn't care about all that. I just wanted it to record to my uh, NVR. And this one works fine without any subscription necessary. So those four criteria are why I landed on this one. It just ticked all the boxes. And after sifting through a lot of different cameras and looking at a lot of different reviews and a lot of different articles, this one just seemed to be the one that met all of the requirements that I was looking for. And that's why I landed on this one. And so it's a great solution. If you have an existing home surveillance system, this is the one that I would recommend for it. So this is the mounted doorbell on the outside of my doors. Like I said, this one uses the existing wire. It basically has two wires that come into it. And those are go back to the chime of the old doorbell. Now the old ch doorbell chime basically has uh, a inverter that basically steps down the AC to about 18 volts. It's still alternating current, but this particular doorbell supports that. And so I tested it with my multimeter. It was in the spec of this particular doorbell. So it really just hooked up and it comes with all kinds of different connectors that you can use. Uh, so you can have one that has a basically a set of pigtails that you can then use wire nuts to wire it into existing wiring. And that's what I ended up using to mount this particular one. I put the bracket on there and it snapped on and then everything was up and running in no time at all once I had it all configured. So this is the inside of the controller box for my doorbell. Now I have an old analog system on my house and your house may look different from this one, but this one is pretty straightforward. It just has some old uh, metal bars for the chimes. It has this metal bar right here uh, for the high note, and this is the low note right here. And the way it worked was basically you press the button and then that would cause this striker right here to go down and hit this bar right here. And then when you release the button, the spring would then release the, the striker and it would come up here and hit that bar. And that's what gives it the high note, then the low note. Now this one had a loop that basically connected to this screw terminal here and it supported two doorbells. So you could have one on the back door uh, right here if you wanted, and then one on the front door. And, but this one only had a front door uh, doorbell. And so it only had the loop going to this screw terminal right here and then uh, the ground for it right there. So to basically bypass that chime, I moved the wire off of this screw terminal to this one right here. So it allowed this loop to continue on right here. And that's how you were able to get the full 18 volts to the door uh, just by bypassing this chime right here. And that's what was recommended by the instructions that I read and everybody else suggested doing something similar to that. Now, however, you you know, bypass this particular uh, chime right here is up to you. I just moved it from one screw terminal to the next and that completed that, that circuit, but your results may vary. So this is how I ended up wiring mine up. It's very straightforward and it works fine. 
Now, the next thing to do is to enable the, the ports for your camera. Now, you can't do this in the app on the phone, so you need to get the IP address for your camera. So to do that, you'll just have to either figure out what it is by trial and error or go into your router or your firewall at home and look at DHCP leases or IP leases for your network. And in that, you'll probably see something that says Rio link next to it, and that will give you the address for your particular camera. So then you'll want to put that IP address into your nav bar and then you'll want to log in. So just punch in the password that you use whenever you set the camera up using the app and it will take you to the preview of your particular uh, camera. Now mine's looking at my front yard where I'm still doing a lot of dirt work, but there is my pile of dirt and where I'm working on stuff. Now to turn on RTSP or on VIF, uh, the way you get to this is to go into the settings go over to network and then under network scroll down uh, expand advanced then go down here to port settings and click set up then under this is where you can enable and disable the different kinds of protocols that are available on this so this one supports rtsp then you say rtsp port and then you can turn on on right here and then get the on port so i've got them both turned on and once you have that click save and then that will enable both of those protocols for you to use inside of your NVR. So once you have RTSP turned on or you have OnVIF turned on, you need to figure out what the endpoint for your particular RTSP or, or your camera will be. Now, RTSP is pretty straightforward. It's basically RTSP colon slash slash admin, which is the default username colon. Then you put in the password that you supplied whenever you uh, set up your camera. And then you put the ad symbol and then the IP address of your camera. And then you put in colon 554, which is the port number. Then you put in slash H264 preview underscore 01 underscore main or underscore sub. They're otherwise identical other than that last piece right there. Now with typically with RTSP, you, t you have two feeds. And one of them is the uh, sub feed, which is used for the live preview. And then this one is for the recording. So this one is usually a low bandwidth or low resolution uh, recording that allows you to put it up on something like a monitor where you might have several other feeds going at the same time. And then whenever it does motion detection or object detection and it's going to record it to disk, it will use this feed to capture a high resolution recording for whatever it is that you're monitoring. So these are the two that you're going to put into your NVR DVR. So I'm going to pull up iSpy Connect, which is Agent DVR is the one I'm using. And um, I'm just going to show you where these settings go in to the particular settings on this particular NVR. So I'm using Agent DVR from iSpy Connect. Now there are certainly other DVRs out there, but I'm going to show you how to add this particular camera to this particular DVR. And so this one right here is pretty straightforward. You just click on new device. Uh, you can skip this screen right here, and then it's going to bring up this new device screen right here. Uh, once you get to this, you click on video source. You say, turn on all these. You want the alerts, record on detect, resize, and so on. Uh, turn those on, and then click OK. And then this is where you set the camera up. And then you come down here to source type, and you choose uh, network camera. And it works with OnVIF. It supports Nest camera, NDI, MPEG, and several other formats right here. But this is the one I'm going to be using for this camera. And then you supply either the username and password, which works for this particular uh, DVR. If yours doesn't, you just paste the entire URL into the live URL. And that's where you have this, this sub URL right here is for the live view. And then the, this URL right here is for the record view. If yours doesn't have a prompt for username and password, you can simply embed it into the URL right here. Uh, now mine does, so I could actually remove this right here and just do like that and then put the username and password like in these two boxes and it will just basically uh, generate that URL whenever it goes to connect to the camera. But I'm gonna click, click cancel on this and cancel on this and okay on this. And then I'm gonna delete this particular device because I don't need it because I already have mine. Now, whenever you have your device uh, installed, next thing you wanna do is make sure that's turned on. Um, now, if you don't see the picture on the preview right here, just make sure that when you click on it, it'll, it might say connecting or you might just see an icon there. Make sure you hit this power button down here and that will enable the camera and it will start uh, doing its thing. And you can see that it's currently just looking at my front yard and then you can turn on sound if you want to listen to it and so on. Now, once it's set up, you'll want to also enable all the other features uh, that you have for your other cameras 
like I have on motion detection. I have it all hooked up to AI. I have all of these different things going on. Uh, and I want that because that's what's going to be sending me alerts. So to enable that on this particular uh, DVR, I just go to copy settings and then I can select my source device. So I'll go from my garage and just select all of the uh, options here and then say my destination to my doorbell and click OK. And then that will copy all of the settings. And that basically means that it's basically going to behave the exact same way of all my other uh, devices on my particular uh, setup right here, which currently has five cameras with the addition of this new uh, camera right here. But previously, I just had these four, but now I have the one on my front door that is monitoring the, the front steps of my house. So um, this is a fairly straightforward solution. So that is how you use this camera. It's pretty straightforward. Now, this is a great camera. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that the live view has a fairly low resolution at 640 by 480, but the record your um, resolution is pretty decent. I think it's a five full five megapixel recording. So it's like a 2K recording, which is gonna be great for most uh, standard kind of recordings that you would get from a camera like this. So if you're looking for a great camera that's gonna work with NVRs and DVRs, this is a great choice for it. And I'll provide a link to the uh, camera in the video description down below. I'm not getting paid to make this review. I just decided that I would add it. So in case you're interested in this, certainly get this camera and then also check out my other content and look at my other video related to setting up a DVRs and NVRs and home security at your home. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.